Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a video about what guitars I have, what guitars I use for different things, my amps, and of course my pedal board. So um, hopefully guitarists and even people who don't play guitar are interested in this thing. Um, after this I'm going to be doing some stuff like about CDs, vinyls, collections. But yeah, let's take a look. Right, so um, I'll start off showing you my guitar corner. Sort of, I'm not visible because I can only have my camera going in one direction. So here's the 14 guitars we'll be going through, or 13 guitars and a bass. I have an orange combo amp, a uh, Marshall combo, and if you can see down there, I have a black star combo. And now over to my pedal board. Let me move this. So I'm using a more noise killer, a MXR carbon copy, and then I have a Fender ABY pedal to go between my two amp heads or run them together. My wireless system with a business card on it. Down to my Boss Super Chorus, my MXR Van Halen Phase 90, and my Boss Flanger pedal. I also use a uh, Crybaby and a Moore Baby Tuner with uh, bullet cables, and my wireless is from AKG. Now if we go over to where my amps are, I've got the orange micro dark, I've got a little Marshall sat on there, a black star uh, ID series 100 head, a Marshall, I'm not sure on the model, 4x12 cab, down to the black stuff, 4x12 for the ID head. So yeah, that's the amp, if I go over here you can see some of my CDs, which we'll be looking at in other videos. So yeah, that's the amp and pedals. Now we'll talk about the um, guitars individually. Right, I'm just going to do these in the order. They're on the racks that I store them on, which are great. Um, first of all, we have my first guitar, a Court G110. All my guitars have my signature picks in, if they'll focus from in tune guitar picks. It's not being changed, it's literally just a Court made Stratocaster style guitar with a humbucker pickup, basic kind of old school trim. That's all there is really to that guitar. It's, I've had it like 10 years, sorry I kind of have to dip off screen to get them. Um, second up, I don't really use this one a great deal, it's my 7 string, it's an LTD M17. Um, kind of, both of these guitars have kind of doodled on a bit, which again, I would advise against doing, I've said that before to people, but I'll reiterate that. Um, standard LTD is relatively basic, just their own stock pickups. Uh, nothing changed like the tuners or anything. I'm missing the top string because I don't really play a great deal, but that's that one. Next of all is... Uh, next of all, that's not a phrase. Um, next up um, is my other core, which is this. It's the EVL X4. It's got EMG passive pickups, the single coil push pull switch, a licensed Floyd, I believe. It might not actually be licensed by Floyd Rose, but it's a floating style tremolo, two fixed points. Um, all the all the guitars so far have bolt on construction. Uh, the more expensive ones, which we'll get to, do not have bolt on. Um, but yeah, this is a nice guitar. I picked this up for a hundred British pounds, which is like a hundred and fifty American dollars euros. So yeah, that's pretty standard but nice guitar for metal stuff. And next up, we have another very metally guitar. It's a Jackson Warrior, one of their cheaper series models with the stock pickups from Jackson. Um, I've not changed anything on this, but I really like how it sounds. It's very nice. Jackson y kind of shred sound. And now we're coming up to a couple of the more high end guitars. Um, it's my Schecter Hellraiser Solo 2 from the Diamond series. And it's what you'd want from a kind of higher end guitar with the active EMGs that also feature a push pull toggle switch. Um, forgotten the model of EMGs, they are there. They're on a few Schecters and they're really nice. It's got the uh, the tuners where you have the oh, what are they called the uh, locking tuners, I believe they're called. Um, it's just a fixed bridge tailpiece. Uh, you've got your battery thing made in the USA. 
It's a really nice guitar from Schecter. Um, next up we have a, the first of two signature guitars in this video. It's Mick Thompson from Slipknot's Ibanez MTM2 with this. This bridge I find really interesting because it has the fine tuners but no bar, it's not a tremolo bridge, it's fixed in, it's kind of somewhere between fixed and floating but I find that an interesting style of bridge. It keeps in tune really nicely, it's got the locking nuts here. I'm not the best with technical terms but that's that, uh, Duncan designed pickups. So, not that his signature Seymour Duncan sadly but hey ho, next up. My most played guitar, the ESP Standard Series Eclipse, um, with GoTo tuners or GoTo, e both the MG eighty ones um, fixed bridge again. I prefer a fixed bridge to stays in tune, but a Floyd now and again can be fun. Now we're getting over to right number two, so kind of halfway point in the video. Really simple gear for music home brand. Relatively cheap, got two of the same sticker on for some reason. Bass, I I thought I'd get a kind of basic bass because I don't play this instrument as much, it's more for recording and basic practice. Um, I've got a couple of uh, relatively affordable acoustic guitars which I'll show you together. We have a Yamaha which I was given by a friend of my grandfather. Um, it's Pretty basic, I'm missing a couple strings, I don't play acoustic very much, and uh, my grandmother, her um, Barnes & Mullins acoustic, which is a nice classical guitar, I have tape on it, which I need to take off from where I try to gaffer tape a strap onto it, terrible idea, don't do it. Now we're getting to, the, these are all pointy, this is my newest guitar, it's a PV um, Explorer style Rotor. It's really heavy, it's probably the heaviest guitar I have, it's an Explorer style with the stock pickups licensed Floyd Tremolo, which sounds really great. This one stays in tune a lot better than some of the licensed Floyds I've had. And their pickups sound, they're kind of like DiMarzio, but with more low end, I would say. I don't own any DiMarzio, but I've played them. This is the headstock, quite similar, maybe a bit more pointed than a Gibson Explorer. But yeah, I picked this up for a hundred pounds the other day, really cheap, and they don't make them anymore. Another of my favourites. This is an ESP LTD series, the Alexi Leho six hundred, with his signature pickup, which is that feature. A Floyd Rose original series tremolo. It's got no neck pickup. Um, it's a nice Randy Rhodes V style. Really cool shape. I like the shape. Um, Sorry to keep, this is why we have the holders. Um, sorry to keep going off camera, but I don't have magic powers. My BC Rich Warlock, the second electric guitar I owned. Um, this one is the only guitar I've really kind of customised a lot. It's got the EMG H4 and Alexi Leho, again with the push-pull. Um, it's had a bit of neck treatment. Um, new sweet pots and that's not got a tone control annoyingly which I can't roll down which I should probably add in but that involves drilling into the guitar more but yes what you'd expect from BC Rich it sounds really heavy and its balance is not great as with the last guitar here also by BC Rich slightly better balanced it's a beast it's What's it? NJ series um, with a Seymour Duncan Invader. It has um, a licensed Floyd Trem, which came, but it's got this really cool paint job someone's had done. I picked this up second hand. Yeah, I think that's a really cool guitar. I don't play it a great deal, it's more of a display guitar. But yeah, um, it's, it's a nice guitar for. I play a lot of black metal, obviously, so it's got the thin neck, which makes. The kind of uh, diminished chord change is easier. I don't like too thick of a neck for that kind of chord change. Um, but yeah, that's my 13 guitars and my bass. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Next up, I'm going to be doing some um, stuff like, like I say, CD reviews. I've got quite a lot of CDs, so I need to go through, work out 
I'm going to be promoting some underground UK acts because I live in the UK. There's some great local bands, not so local bands as well, say from like uh, Wales or up north. There's a lot of bands I enjoy in the UK that may not get as much promotion because, you know, they play pub gigs rather than venues like Brixton Academy, which, you know, you, you need help promoting from one to the other. So I'm going to give a lot of bands kind of shout outs. And in every video, I'm going to wear a different shirt. This is from the Infernal Sea. They're a British black metal band. I got into them from them touring with Anal Nathrak in uh, 2012. So I'm going to wear a different shirt in each video from big bands like Iron Maiden and stuff like that, all the way through to kind of bands like Life Lover, then through to local bands like, um, say, my own stuff. But not just my own stuff. It depends which some of the smaller bands don't have shirts done as yet because their budget. If they do or if they have patches, I've got three battle jackets which I'll be doing a video about. If I have their patch, I'll be showing that. Every day I'm going to do a CD recommendation, which I'm now going to get. Uh, today, from an underground British doom metal band based in Leeds, Rain by Petrichor, it's got Five songs that last around 35 to 40 minutes. It's a lovely CD. Um, they're good friends of mine. Uh, I think I traded a copy of my album for this, which was a really cool deal. I like to do that because money I, I spend on frivolous things like more guitars or plectrums or tattoos, which I'll be doing a video about. I have 14 at the minute. But yeah, it's a really great band, Petricor. I'll pop a link to their Facebook down there. And I'm pointing at the description, not my floor. Um, yeah, so check them guys out. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.